did you want to go and start again? Yeah. You can start again if you want. So why did you stop there? To check uh, the other side. How do I... Am I done? Yes, there's a laser car coming. You must wait. I want to be careful with the speed. It's actually falling on this street here. Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Chris and I'm an instructor at Signal Driving School. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to our channel and also turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when we release new videos. Also, you can check us out on Instagram, Signal Driving School Australia. In today's video, we have James, who has actually never driven with us before. So he hasn't driven this car either. And he's going to be doing a mock test um, just for him to get ready for his practical driving test. All right, let's see how he goes. Okay, so you can start the car whenever you're ready, please. At the start of the mock test, I asked James about some vehicle controls. Although he got most of them correct, he did not know about the anti-glare. Am I supposed to also indicate that I know where all the stuff is i'm guessing yeah so if you start the car first i'll just give you some i'll just tell you what we need to do here yeah. um so you know that this is a mock test right yeah um, so that means that i'm not gonna be giving you any help yeah um, i know so but obviously if i need to intervene i might have to intervene okay? yeah Okay. Um, but otherwise, I'll be saying turn right, turn, turn left. left. Yes. Um, but if I don't say anything, you, can, you can follow the road, right? Can follow the, yeah. Um, also, another thing is, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Yeah. But obviously, it should not be anything related to like asking me things like speed limits. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So before we move. Also, at the end of this mock test, you'll get, I'll just give you this form as well. So I'll be marking some stuff here. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, yeah. Can you show me how you would turn on the front demister? Front demister? Yeah. It should be around here. Uh, this one, I believe. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I'll switch to there and turn it on, turn on the demister. With that? Yeah, more of these. Yeah. Um, hazard lights. Yeah. Yep. What does this do? This uh, flips the mirror down. Yeah, but what? What's it? What? What? What is it there for? What do? Why do they put it there? I actually don't know. Okay, no. that's all right. Um, so that's actually an anti glare. So, like, if you're driving at night and there's okay. light coming in the mirror yeah so it actually stops the reflection of the light oh uh, okay yeah, I, don't, I don't actually know that one all right that's all right okay so when you're ready you can go right this way before moving off james puts the car in drive carry out the observations but he only applied the signal after the car had moved forward the signal is necessary because it warns other car park users about our intentions. James steered a bit too late and ended up having to reverse. Although this is not a driving fault, the turn could have been done in one movement if he had turned sooner.
Then I'm gonna get you to turn left. Turn left. When you get to the next intersection, you can go right. Go right. Here, the signal came on just before the turn, which is a non-critical driving error. So right at this one. And then at the end of the street, turn left. And then I'm gonna get you to take the first street on your right. We are turning right, and as can be seen in the video, there is no oncoming traffic. However, James stops for no reason, which is a driving fault. This repeats later on in the mock test. Turn off the aircon. And then if you wanna go ahead and pull up on the left, please. Pull up on the right? Yep. So what you can do, if it's too cold for you, you can actually you, uh, keep the aircon on. If you switch off that. It's actually over here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. And anytime if it gets too, if it gets warm, you can just uh, move it back. Yeah. Okay. Not just blown on my hand. Oh, okay, so. okay. That's all right. Uh, So what I'm going to get you to do when you're ready, I want you to reverse the car in a straight line. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. James carried out the reversing exercise really well. Okay. I'm ready? Yeah, when you're ready. Whenever you're ready.
Wait, when is enough? Yeah, I'll tell you when to stop. Keep going. Alright, that should do. Um, and then whenever you're ready, you can turn around the car. Turn around the car right now? Yeah, when you're ready. So, yeah. James moves forward first before completing a 3.10. Although this might not be marked as a driving fault in the test, it is always best to start the 3.10 straight away as the situation might change while driving forward. then at the end of the street, turn left. We are turning left at the T intersection with no marking. So it's a giveaway sign by default. James stops the car when it was safe to proceed and it is a minor driving fault. He should have slowed down earlier and looked through the intersection on approach. James kind of get confused at this crossroad, but did not obstruct traffic, which is not a driving fault. He does well to recognize the speed limit and overall his speed management was spot on. Good speed at the speed bump. Then I'm gonna get you to take the first street on your right. First street on my right. Yep, so it's coming up a bit further. Now, up to this point, most of the mistake that James made were non-critical driving errors. However, it is at this turn that James makes what I would consider his first critical driving error. I've asked him to turn right and there is no car coming from the opposite side. However, James stops the car. Luckily, there was no car close behind. He said he stopped to check but again here, we need to be looking on approach and proceed so when safe to do so stop without stopping. When passing through a railway crossing, we need to scan left and right, but James did not check, which is a non-critical driving error. When you get to the traffic lights, Turn right. Traffic lights turn right. Yep.
we are going straight ahead and there are two lanes which are about to form one lane. James should have checked his left side mirror and even better do a shoulder check on the left just in case someone is trying to cut in front of us. There are similar situations coming up and James does not check as well. These are non-critical driving errors. James does well to recognize the change in the speed limit. We move into the left lane and there is a car parked on the side. James does well to use the left signal. However, even though there is a car parked on the left, he should have checked the mirror as well, just in case there is a cyclist in the blind spot. As you approach these traffic lights, can you keep in the, in the left, go in the left lane? Then just continue straight. The roundabout coming up and just keep going straight. Going straight? Yep. Just exit. James does well at this roundabout as well.
gonna be a roundabout coming up. Yeah. I'm gonna get you to go left. Left. First exit. A vast gems to go left at the roundabout, he does well to get in the correct lane nice and early and also does well navigating through the roundabout. Also, he did well to merge as the two lanes were merging into one. Although this is not a driving fault, there was no point merging here because the sign on the left said that the left lane was an added lane. I was kind of worried that he was going to change lane on a continuous solid white line, which would have been a critical driving error. Here you can just follow the road. Good observation for merging traffic. Yeah, we are taking the exit on the left here. Yeah. Good exit speed. And then you can stay in the left lane. So note these traffic lights. At the next one, we are taking the slip lane on the left. Slip lane on the left. Yeah, right. Okay. 
Also, it's at this point that James made what I would consider his second critical driving error. We are turning left on a slip lane, but James does not scan on approach and kind of stop for no reason, which is kind of overcautious. You can see in the video that the vehicle behind had to go around us, which makes it a critical driving error. James does an excellent job changing lane and he carries out the indicating as well as the observation routine correctly. When safe to do so, you can change into the right lane. I asked James to change back into the left lane and we are close to the traffic lights. I've seen many drivers change lane in the middle of the intersection, which is not allowed. James does an outstanding job of waiting until he passed the traffic lights before changing lane. Then when safe, change back into the left lane. Good merging as well. We taking the second street on the right. Not this one. No, this one, the next one. It's coming up. Just after you pass this park class and turn right. It's just here. Here we are turning right and there is a school zone which runs between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. James does not see the school zone and did around 43 kilometers an hour in a 40 kilometers an hour zone, which is a critical driving error. I had to ask him to slow down. Then at the end of the street, turn left. Street turn left. I want to be careful with the speed. It's actually falling on this street here. to do it. 
the best parallel cap behind this car. Yeah. I've asked James to do a reverse parallel park, but it didn't go well. First, he does not signal approaching the parked car. Okay. Also, he turns a bit too late and ends up hitting the curb. I asked him if he wanted to start again, of which he did. However, the second attempt did also not go that well, and I asked him to drive off at the end. The driving examiner will mostly mark this as a critical driving error because we touched the curb and also did not stop for approaching vehicles. Um, did you want to go and start again? Yeah. You can start again if you want. How do I... Never mind, don't know. This one for that. wait all right so they are happy to wait for you that's fine you can proceed Okay, you can drive off when you're ready. Mm. Usually, usually then.
at the end of the street, there is a no right turn sign. James recognizes it and turn left, which is very good. Also, he gets into the correct lane before turning right. So at the next traffic light, go right. So right at the traffic light. When turning right, James should also scan through the intersection. Observation and scanning through the intersection is necessary even if we have the right of way. However, we don't necessarily need to slow down to do this. We are just looking out just in case someone ran a red light or there is an emergency vehicle. After the turn, I asked James to pull over on the left. However, he did not use the left indicator, which is a non-critical driving error. Then you can park the vehicle on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep driving forward a little bit. We've come to the end of the mock test, and we'll have a quick chat to James about what he did wrong and how he can improve. So how do you think you went? Pretty badly. Why is that? Mm. A few small mistakes. Yeah. You can yeah. only make six. You can only make six. And also the par the parallel parking one where I usually can do it perfectly, but Oh okay, okay. Yeah. Uh have you had any lessons with any instructor before? No. Okay, you never had the lesson. Alright, that's that's fine. Um, it's actually pretty good for someone who never had a lesson with an instructor. It's, it's definitely surprising. Okay. Obviously, there's some stuff you need to work on, but yeah, it's it, for someone who never had a lesson with an instructor. I think it's not too bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the main ones, the problem, the the one that will definitely fail the test straight away is. You're going right at the road with an, no oncoming traffic and then you just stop in the car. That's mm -hmm. a critical driving error. Because we, we're going straight and then I'm like, take the next right. And then you can see there's no one coming, but you still stop the vehicle. Oh. 
if there's no car coming you need to go because otherwise if there's someone behind guess what they can they can do crash yeah they can hit you from behind so you need to be looking as you drive you're going right put on your right indicator look ahead there's no one coming turn okay uh reverse power parking that was a critical driving error because you actually hit the curb yeah okay uh, another critical driving error, there was an area where I asked you to go right, it was a school zone. So it, it's actually 120, but that school zone, it's all day school zone, which means that it runs from 7 to 4. Okay, okay. so you crossed over 40, you were doing 43. So that's actually a criti critical driving error. Uh, maybe some other small mistakes. So this is an anti-glare, this one. Uh, yeah it stopped the reflection of the light and then when we went straight towards the end of this street here yeah you 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 indicated too late yeah okay that was another one that i saw yeah unnecessary stopping turning right so that one i told you unnecessary stopping at giveaway sign so yeah. you are so this is an intersection like this you're going yeah. left if there's a giveaway sign slow down maybe around 15 kilometers an hour but you you stopped mm. you know you don't have to stop if there's no car coming okay just need to slow down definitely slow down i'm not saying don't slow down slow down but no need to stop mm -hmm. um insufficient observation with 3.10 so anytime you are changing direction when you're doing a 3.10 you need to look okay? okay so you went forward nicely you did your checks you reversed nicely you did your checks yeah but then when you were ready to go you put on the right indicator and off you went okay. you should have checked again okay um the slip lane was actually also a critical driving error because you were turning left across the slip lane and you stopped yeah there was no car coming the car behind us had to actually go around us because okay. you stopped for no reason okay okay so because you make you made that car do that that's actually a critical driving error okay so you need to be looking ahead looking on approach um maybe you need to check your rear view mirror a bit more when you're braking so anytime you're pressing the brake check this mirror here yeah um and also when you're going through intersections you need to look left and right okay. so like we went through the railway crossing you didn't check and then usually traffic lights as well you yeah. need to be looking okay um with the reverse parallel park i say to you go to the car do a reverse parallel park what should you do before you start okay stop signal signal you need to signal when approaching the car because otherwise no one knows what you're trying to do okay uh and also when you we, we stopped here as well you didn't indicate yeah you need to indicate when you're pulling over do you have any questions no, that's really all anything that i've marked with the star that's a critical driving error yeah so that means that if you get one of these that's the end of the test so like yeah. here we've got what one two three Yeah, three, three critical driving error, which is not too bad. Okay. Thank you for watching. And if any of you is interested in uh, doing a free mock test like this one, you can get in touch with us either on our website, signaldrivingschool.com.au or you can contact us on Instagram, Signal Driving School Australia. And we will see if we can arrange a mock test for you. Otherwise, if you've enjoyed watching this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment down below. If you are doing a driving test soon, I wish you the best of luck. See you in the next video.